it has been a roller coaster of a week already. We've had a couple of scrubs, we've had a rud, we've had some incredible lunar triumphs, and we've had some communications losses. So let's just get right into it, because we've got some good news and some bad news to go over today. On Sunday, Firefly Aerospace successfully landed their Blue Ghost lander on the moon. And on Tuesday, we finally got video of that landing. And what incredible footage this is. Blue Ghost launched on January 14th on a Falcon 9 rocket, and this little lander was able to cruise to the lunar surface and stick the landing. It's part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program, or CLIPS, delivering a whole bunch of science payloads to the moon, and it's a huge win for Firefly. They've already begun several of their lunar surface experiments as we speak. I really want to highlight and appreciate, though, how beautiful this footage is. I can't get over how good this looks. The lander has already been on the moon for a couple of days and only has about 10 days left before it goes into lunar night and doesn't have any sunlight to power its solar panels. Hopefully all the experiments on board are able to operate successfully and we are able to get as much of that data back as possible and hopefully a whole lot more video before they run out of power. Something else I thought was really cool was that even Buzz Aldrin, the last surviving Apollo 11 astronaut, was watching their moon landing live and able to celebrate with them. Oh, Khan, shoot engineer on ops. They'll set the landing. We're on the moon. Okay. There's another robotic lunar lander attempting to land today, but before we get to that, I wanted to get into some rocket news and some of the bad news that we had to talk about this week. First off on Monday was supposed to be a dual launch, one of the European Ariane 6 rocket and another of SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy. Unfortunately, both scrubbed at the last minute. Whether it was issues with the launch pad or issues with the rockets themselves, I'd rather have a scrub than a rud, a rapid unscheduled disassembly. Unfortunately, we had one of those this week as well. On Sunday night, March 2nd, SpaceX launched 21 Starlink satellites into orbit and had a flawless launch and a perfect landing. However, disaster struck on its way back to Port Canaveral. Booster 1086 landed on the drone ship Just Read the Instructions, but a fire broke out in the engine bay at some point. One of the landing legs got damaged, and the booster tipped over and was lost. This is really unfortunate because it was only the fifth flight of this particular booster. When you consider that some Falcon 9 rockets have flown over 20 times, this is really unfortunate. I'm sure, though, that SpaceX is going to be digging into the data and figuring out what went wrong and trying to prevent that from happening again. Although, the last time this happened was only last year, so... Ouch. Unfortunately, the bad news doesn't stop there. So, the Intuitive Machines lander that launched on February 26th had three rideshare payloads going along with it. NASA's Lunar Trailblazer, Astroforge's Odin spacecraft, and Epic Aerospace's Chimera Geo spacecraft. Things aren't looking good at all. Lunar Trailblazer, which was hunting for water on the moon, hit communications snags a couple hours after launch. NASA's team briefly regained contact, but they're still troubleshooting. And it looks like it's in a small tumble and isn't able to have enough power generating through its solar panels or able to orient its antennas towards Earth. For Astroforge's Odin spacecraft, it's basically the same story, although they never were able to get an acquisition of signal. Just a couple of pings showing that the spacecraft was generating power, but they believe that it's also in a slow spin and isn't able to point its antennas in the right direction. Because they were never able to acquire the signal and send commands needed in order to do the burns needed to rendezvous with their target asteroid, it's also all but lost. And as for the Chimera Geo spacecraft, Epic Aerospace said that it was healthy but they haven't had any sort of updates since, and it also looks like they were never able to get the acquisition of signal. 
However, that one is supposed to do a trajectory around the moon and eventually go into geostationary orbit around Earth. So there is a chance that they might still be able to establish contact with that, unless they already have and are just being really quiet about it. But it seems like all of those rideshare payloads are a loss at this point. Despite those communication issues with those rideshare payloads, it's not all doom and gloom because the primary payload, Intuitive Machines Athena Lander, has had a strong communication signal this entire time since launch. They were able to do all of their post-launch checkouts on all the instruments on board, including the rovers and the little mini lander that's going to be hopping around after they land. The Athena lander was able to successfully enter into lunar orbit a couple of days ago and has even returned some beautiful video of some of those orbits. They're just hours away from attempting their landing near the Mons Mouton area of the moon, near the lunar south pole. If everything goes well, they will be able to deploy all of the NASA experiments on board as well as three small rovers. I'm really excited for this, and we'll find out very soon if this is going to be successful or not. If it is, we'll have two United States landers on the moon at the same time performing science. And that's the kind of space future I'm here for. Something else that really warmed my heart was that Gene Kranz, Mission Control Director during the Apollo days, visited Intuitive Machines Mission Control Center and wished their team a couple of words of encouragement. It's really great, and I wish you... Uh... Really, the, not the best of luck. Continued professionalism in the work that you're doing because you're going back to the moon again. Thanks for the opportunity. Man, if that's not a good luck charm, I don't know what is. At the same time that the Athena lander will be attempting to land on the moon, Ariane Space is going to be doing another launch attempt of their Ariane 6 rocket, and this will be carrying a classified payload for the French military. If all goes well, this will be the second flight of this particular rocket. And also later today, unless there's any other scrub issues, SpaceX will be attempting again the launch of their Starship Super Heavy for the eighth time. These test flights are all about pushing the limits of this system and learning from their mistakes. And especially after the last flight exploded mid-flight, we're really hoping that they are able to accomplish all of their goals that they hope to achieve with this particular test flight. Hopefully, they'll soon be able to get all the way into orbit and not only have the largest rocket in the world, but the first fully reusable rocket in the world. Not just the first stage, but the second stage as well. So there you have it, just a quick update on what's been happening over the past couple of days. It's been a wild ride. Spaceflight is never easy, but with every scrub, every loss, and every win, we're a little bit closer to the stars, and hopefully a little bit closer to the type of future that we want. But what do you think is going to happen? Do you think the Ariane 6 and Starship is going to launch successfully? Do you think that the Athena lander is going to land successfully? Let us know in the comments below. I can't wait to talk to you guys again and discuss the outcome of the Athena landing. I'm really hoping that this goes off well. We're certainly going to have a lot to talk about in the coming days. Thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, keep moving onwards and upwards. And don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.